new videos every day. Life, wisdom, psyche truth, massage. Hi, I'm Jen Hillman. And something I'm going to show you guys today is the difference between Swedish massage and deep tissue massage. A lot of times these two techniques will be used in combination because they really complement each other very well. But there are some differences in the approach that you take and the effect on the body. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll just use a little bit of oil to work on the back. Generally speaking, Swedish massage is used to stimulate circulation, to help relax the body, and is usually characterized by long, continuous fluid movements. So a Swedish technique is used to apply oil to the skin, for example. So using long strokes, with steady pressure across the entire surface of the part that I'm working. Swedish massage is a great way to start to warm up the muscle tissue and helps to improve circulation in the area, really helping to flush out the arteries and veins that are carrying the blood. It also helps to bring more oxygen to any tight muscles. So just using these long strokes all the way across her back. Just helping her to relax and allowing her body to become accustomed to my touch. So applying the oil in this way is pretty standard for any deep tissue or Swedish massage. So there's some other Swedish techniques that you can use. One is called petrissage, where it's a form of kneading. So you actually knead the tissue back and forth. So across her back, I can do the left side, and then the right side, just kneading back and forth. So I'm using a steady pressure, but it's not extremely deep. Petrissage can also be used in a localized area. Just working the shoulders, for example. This is a place where a lot of people carry tension. So you can just work one area, or you can work more generally a larger area. Another great Swedish technique is using the flat part of the knuckles, not the edges of the knuckles, that can be too deep and sensitive. So using the flat parts of the knuckles, you can move your hands all the way down on either side of the spine in one long continuous stroke. making circles right at the tops of the hips 
is also a really great way to target another tight area for a lot of people. So again, just running the flat part of the knuckles down the spine. circles at the tops of the hips. So by now your partner is probably feeling pretty relaxed and comfortable on the table and by working the Swedish techniques in this way you've had a chance to identify where you, there might be some tension or tightness in your partner's body. So this is a good time to start working some of the deep tissue techniques. So deep tissue really just refers to an approach where you start to access the deeper layers of muscles. This is where you'll start to identify knots and tight constricted areas of tension. So I'll work into her shoulders because it is an area where a lot of people deal with tension. So just using a slightly firmer pressure, I can go in with my thumbs and start to work a more isolated area. And as I work into this area, I'm noticing little knots, little bumps, places where the tissue is not soft. It's kind of hard and tight. So these are the areas where she's holding tension. And it's kind of hard to show on a video because it's something that I'm feeling. So as you practice these techniques, it's really important that you tune into your partner's body and be aware of what you feel. So one way that I like to use deep tissue is to identify those knots or identify a tight place and use a firm, steady pressure right in that area. And you can also ask your partner, does that feel pretty tight? Is that sensitive? And it's also good to just check in with the pressure to make sure that you're not hurting them because sometimes these areas can be really sensitive. And once I feel a little release, I can move into another area. And like I said, everybody's body is different, so the sensations that you'll notice are all going to be different. Some people have really crunchy spots where it feels like you're running your fingers over gravel. Those areas I like to use a little bit of vibration, actually vibrating the area with a steady firm pressure. This helps to bring blood into the area, really helps to flood the area with blood that has new oxygen, white blood cells, red blood cells, all of these help to repair tissues and improve circulation. And as this starts to loosen up, I can actually work even deeper into the tissue now. And you can use these techniques just identifying knots all over the back but especially in the shoulders, between the shoulder blades, at the tops of the shoulders, you'll find a lot of knots for most people. So just wherever you find those little tight spots, just hone in on that area using a steady, firm pressure. So 
Sometimes when people are really tight and have some knots, the knot is hard to isolate. It'll kind of slip to one side or the other. That is an indicator to you that it's an area that's really tight. So just try and stay patient and stay focused and really try to isolate that tight spot so you can help it to release and relax. So that's one way to use deep tissue techniques. Another thing I like to do is to use my elbow and forearm. This is a great way to work the way all the way down the spine as people carry a lot of tension in the erector muscles. So it's important to note if you are choosing to use your elbow that you want to stay either on the left or right side of the spine. Using your elbow directly on the vertebrae feels terrible. Don't do that. You really want to work into the muscle tissue along either side of the spine. So I go in with my forearm first, just to make a connection. And I'm using a firm pressure here, but I'm not digging into the tissue. Again, even though we're working deeply, the point is still relaxation. You want your partner to feel comfortable. So working nice and slow as I make my way down the spine, it's like squeezing a tube of toothpaste. So it's literally squeezing lactic acid and toxins out of the tissue making way for fresh blood and fresh fluids to enter into the area. And you may notice other places where your partner feels tight along the back. So it's important that you're not in any rush. You're not trying to push your own agenda, but really just trying to work with what you're picking up from your partner's body. As I reach the base of the spine and start to make contact with the top of her hip bone, I bring the pressure less in my elbow and more into the forearm so that I can continue moving past her hip bone up onto the sacrum and using a steady downward pressure towards her feet she's actually able to get a stretch along the low back. And then just gently sliding my forearm off of her back. I can return my hands to the top. So once I come all the way back up to the top of her shoulder, I can just use my fingers to run along the side of her neck, just getting those muscles along the edge of the spine all the way up to the head. And this gives a nice complete feeling. So these are just a few of some of my favorite techniques that I use a lot of the time. So if you go ahead and favorite this video, and leave a thumbs up. Then you can come back and watch it again and work your forearm down the other side of the back and give yourself a chance to practice these Swedish and deep tissue techniques. 
and I'll be making more videos covering this topic of Swedish versus deep tissue massage and we'll be covering other areas of the body as well. So subscribe to the Psyche Truth channel so you can have access to my full library of videos covering these tech topics as well as time massage, yoga, health and wellness videos. And to learn more about me and my practice, visit my website, jenhillmantherapeutictouch.com. Leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, come back and watch again soon. Thanks.